everybody to another exciting episode of Multiplayer the Podcast by Gamers for Gamers. I am your host, Zach Matt Scannis, alongside the lover boy himself, Javier Ortiz. What up? Oh, long time no see. Yo, I know. What it has been, been dude, it's ah. Uh, where you been? It's been crazy, man. Where have you been? I don't I don't know. <laughs> I've been consumed by Black Widow, which is premiering this week. Nice. Uh yeah, man. It's it's been a it's been a crazy few weeks. So uh before we jump into everything, uh you know, just for the, the fans out there listening, uh apologies. Uh it's been you know, uh it's been a little crazy the last few weeks between uh me and Hav both uh just working crazy hours, you know, the we're both in the entertainment industry and the inter- the entertainment industry is not um known for its uh light workloads. <laughs> yeah, really. You get the glamour um, of Hollywood, but underneath that glamour, you know, there's a blood, lot sweat, of demand. <laughs> yeah, blood, sweat and tears. Uh Pretty and, much. and many, many hours of working. So, yeah, you know, it's it's been a, f- a crazy few weeks for work. I'm also uh kind of in and out of town this month. Um literally I I just got back into town last night and then I'm leaving again tomorrow. And so it's just like, well, I, I could squeeze in a, a quick <laughs> podcast. Let's uh why why not? Let's let's do it. Oh, you know what? I forgot to start my little timer. Let me do that real quick. It's and... been about three minutes. Yeah, something like that. I wanna make sure we get you out of here at a decent time, working man. Yeah, I work at night. It's a little insight into what I do. Oh, it's yeah. at night. <laughs> and it's annoying. <laughs> He is a hooker. <laughs> I'm a gentleman of the evening. <laughs> uh, cool. So, um, cool. Timer's going. Uh, remember, everybody, uh, Multiplayer is all over the place in your ears and in your face. You can check us out at youtube.com slash multiplayer. You can also uh, check us out on podcast services of your choice. So if you're like, man, video sucks. I hate <laughs> videos. I never want to see a video in my life. Well, luckily for you, you can check us out as just a audio show. Uh, you know, podcast services. Pick one. Any of them. You know, just aimlessly just, you know, go to the App Store podcasts or whatever and click a podcast service and then type in multiplayer. Don't forget the ED on the end. And we will most likely be on it. If not, it's probably your fault. You probably did something wrong. (laughs) Learn to spell. (laughs) Oh, man. I I miss this uh, crazy show. Uh, Also, uh, remember, everybody, uh, we're over at Patreon at patreon.com slash multiplayer. If you want to help support the show uh help us not work day jobs so we could just do this non-stop 24 uh, 7 just let's do was, it baby man that'd be so nice <laughs> i know wouldn't that be great yes. but you know uh at the very least you know you can like and follow us uh we're over at uh multiplayer or excuse me we're over at uh, instagram at go multiplayer uh and you know just like tell your friends your cat your dog like any, tell people about the show you know uh i would love to grow the audience and uh you know i i I love doing this i know you love doing this sorry i'm front loading the show this week uh with this stuff but you know just thinking about it i'm like man i just i would just love to i just want friends i just want friends (laughs) let's let's make friends so uh but yeah so that all right we got all the info out of the way we we caught up a little bit I'm going to catch back up here in a in a second with some other stuff some video game type of stuff but uh, i think we have a good show today i think we have a good show Think yeah, so? I think so. I, I think so. We'll, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Obviously, we've been we're, we might be a little rusty. We got to shake the rust off from uh, oh, from not on. doing the podcast. I'm always ready. Uh, but yeah, luckily we're naturals, baby. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> also had uh, I have new camera today. Oh, uh, you know. So I think the blacks are a little blacker. I think it's like my fidelity's a little better. But my head's shiny. I got a shiny head. <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> I don't know what's I, going on. It does look a little better now that you mention it. Like it is. It's a little improvement over what I'm used to. Yeah. A friend just gave me like one of those nice like 1080p Logitech ones. And nice. I was like, oh yeah, nice. I've, I've been wanting to get one of those for a while, but just hadn't pulled the trigger. Glad I didn't because now I just have one. Yeah. That's pretty sweet. Looks so good. check that out at youtube.com slash multiplayer. <laughs> <laughs> New camera. Boop, 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 boop. But anyways, uh, Hob, we, we got a good show today. We're going to be talking a little bit about the new Switch announcement. K- kind of. <gasps> kind of a new Switch. 
sort of New switch well, the yeah, rumors so. are true no <laughs> <laughs> well maybe kind of sort of we'll get to that in a minute but uh we're also i kind of want to talk a little playstation news a little uh uh, a little Ghost of Tsushima. There's also um, I like that if game. We have, yeah, that's a good game. Uh, there's also a little State of Play, which it, it's not on my docket for today, but you know, it's it's kind of in the background. That's going to happen the Thursday of this week that we're recording. Um, and then uh, you know, I found some interesting insights into video games that some of the peeps over at Nintendo uh, like uh, some of their favorite games, including Miyamoto. His answer might. Uh, might uh, be a surprise to you. So stick around towards the end of the show to find out about that. And hopefully we have a few minutes for it. You Nintendo don't know Jack this week. I've been missing that silly oh, yeah. game. Uh, so before we get into uh, the meat and potatoes of this week, Hav, uh, obviously it's been a couple weeks. So have you been playing anything interesting? What, what have you been up to? What have you been doing? Uh, You know, it's funny. I, I saw like... The news about Ghost Tsushima, spoilers, new PS5 like upgrade, uh, director's cut, but it had me oh, yeah. it had me thinking about like the PS5 upgrades of games, and so I wanted to dive back into God of War since they did the Ooh. the update, the PS5 version with like yeah, the fancy yeah, yeah. 4K, 60 frames per second, and man, I tell you what, man, you play that game for five minutes and you're sucked in again. It's so much fun. It's it's yeah. so like the story, the acting. Such a beautiful looking game. The gameplay is just spot on. Just chef's kiss. It's so perfect. Um, so I've been I've been blasting through that again. I, I want to go through like I'm almost done the story, but I'm focusing on the um, like all the side stuff that I didn't do before. Because I'm trying to hundred percent, like hundred hundred percent it. Um, yeah, yeah. And it's been man, it's so much fun. Like I'm just messing around with like upgrading armor and like buying all the the different. Um, armor sets and like all the different abilities they can do and like um i want to use the uh that like infinity gauntlet thing that they had uh talked about before i don't know if you ever saw that story about like god of war's version of the infinity gauntlet like thanos no, i i don't think i don't recall that there's a there's a item in the game called the i think it's called the shattered or the gauntlet of shattered dimensions or something like that but oh. it's basically it's one of your accessories that um when you upgrade it it gets um it can get upgraded to have six um, uh, sockets. You remember that where you like you can enhance your gear with adding like gems yeah, or anything. Yeah. So it has six sockets for like the six Infinity Stones, like in Marvel. Um, and so I'm working my way to get to that because it's like supposed to be really powerful and like really fun to use. So I'm almost there. I've got it. I've got to like four sockets right now. So I just need the last three, or I need to upgrade it three more times to to use it to its full ability. So I'm trying to do that. I'm just trying to 100% it, but it's super fun. Like, I'm, I've been enjoying the heck out of it. I, I love it. Um, it just, again, it's like, it's just one of those games that you, you pick it up for like two minutes and you're like, man, I forgot how good this is. And you just want to, yeah. you just want to blitz through it again. Cause when you think, like, when you play through it, it's actually not that long of a game. Like, if you stick to the main quest, like, it's, yeah, it's, it's not super what, long. Like, you could probably blow, blow through it in what, 10 hours? Maybe yeah, I would 15 say 15 at the most. Yeah, I would say 10 to 12. You could, yeah. you could blitz through it pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to do all the side stuff and like upgrade all my stuff and like just do everything that the game has to offer. So I've been, yeah. I've been really enjoying it. It's really fun. Yeah. I was just talking to somebody about that game the other day and it, it man, I just started thinking about it again. It's like, man, God of War is so freaking good. It is. That, is. that is like such a stellar, stellar game. And that's, this come from a guy like, I don't like the other God of War games. And it's like, that no. game kind of came out of nowhere. It's like what like this game is incredible <laughs> yeah it's it's amazing it, it really is like just thinking about like where that franchise started like its origins and then yeah. where it is now and it's just like oh man it's it's completely different but it's nice it's like a nice evolution you know like it, yeah. it really is yeah 100 percent. so yeah i mean i i've definitely been thinking about that game and i i i should play through it again because Man, it was it was so good the first time around, and I almost platinumed it the first time. It I literally got to ninety nine percent, and then there was <laughs> like, like one. That's there enough. was like yeah, well there was like one collectible I couldn't find. I even like looked it up. I was like, where is this thing? I went to the place where apparently it's supposed to be there, and I didn't see it. 
And I looked around for like an hour. I'm like, you know what? I, I think I'm done. I'm, I'm good. I, I beat the game. I feel good. Yeah, <laughs> so it's close enough. I just left it at 99%. But yeah, man, I uh, I love that game. Yeah, it's game great. And it's free for anybody who has a PS5. Which is also yeah, it's awesome. incredible. That, that's worth the price of admission right there. Yeah, it really in is. In my opinion. Yeah. So nice. Cool, man. Um. I haven't really been playing much, <laughs> oh. uh, but I will. Uh, I will tell you one thing, uh, or show you one thing. I got. Hang on. I finally did it. I got an Xbox. Oh, you bought an Xbox? Is yeah. it the little one? Yeah, it's the little guy. I uh, I was able to snag one. Nice. So, uh, yeah, I haven't even plugged it in yet. I I literally I've been out of town, so I, <laughs> it's oh, one okay. of those things like I got it, and it's just as soon as I got it. I was literally leaving, um, so I haven't even had a chance to plug it in. But, um, yeah, you know, uh, I, I think we'll get to this uh, here with the Switch here in a few minutes. But, you know, I feel like just um, Microsoft's kind of been doing everything right. And, oh yeah, you know, I'm finally, literally, I've, I've never been an Xbox guy. It's, it's just they've never, um, outside of the original Xbox, I thought the original Xbox had some pretty cool stuff on it. Um, I just never got around to, uh, you know, actually buying one, but you know, this is the first sex box in a very long time. I've actually been excited about Phil Spencer, man, he's just <laughs> been crushing it. So you're going to get game I, pass. Oh yeah. Nice. I mean, that's, that's really the only reason to have it, you know? It's, yeah, I it's, agree. Uh, yeah. So, I, and the backwards compatibility aspect of it is like, that's really true. Cool. So, I forgot about that. Yeah, so I mean, it's it's basically just a backwards compatibility machine when you really think about it. So I'm just gonna go through like a bunch of like back catalog games. Um, you know, I was thinking about it, and it's like there's some games. I, I was just scrolling through the Game Pass library, and it's like there's some games um, from uh, the past that would be like great to go through again. Like I could just play through Banjo Kazooie and Banjo Tooie, like. You know, and it's it feels a little like blasphemy playing that on an Xbox, but the fact that I could play that really easily. This and, you mean? Oh yeah, this that's beautiful the one, baby. thing. Uh, but being able to like play it in a format that like, you know, with with like your with like a Nintendo sixty four, you need to kind of you need to get the right adapters for it to maybe look okay. Uh, yeah, to play it on tough. a sixty four on an HD TV, but you know. Uh, the versions that are uh, within Rare Replay, uh, you know, they're they're literally built for, you know, playing on yeah. a 1080p TV. So it's like that's a great way to like play through those games at just the cost of Game Pass. You know, um, so I'm probably gonna play through like the Banjo games. Nice. Um, yeah, Banjo wanna... Two is so dude. Oh, it's like it's like it's crazy how good they like. I know everybody talk about Banjo Kazooie, but like. Banjo Tooie is is I think it's farly superior and it's just excellent. Just everything yeah, about it. Yeah, for sure. It. I mean, they they took everything right about Banjo Kazooie and they just kicked it up and they made it better. <laughs> yeah. Um. So you know, I'm pretty excited to kind of go through some of my back catalog, especially on the Xbox side. You know, there's some Gears games I've missed. There's yep. a there's a few Halo games that uh, I missed. Um. So, you know, I'm going to go through and, like, play some stuff. I'm excited to go through the entire, like, gear story. That That's one, like, those games are a lot of fun. I just, I've never had a chance to fully play sure. through the entire series. So, I could go th- literally one through five, and, you know, it's just the price of Game Pass, which is pretty sweet. You yeah. know, that's, that's like a... That's a good deal right there. And I, and the great thing about Game Pass, like, it's such a perfect platform for, like, I don't know if I want to buy this game. I'm going to try it here. Yeah. And then, you know, you can play through and be like, you know what, I, I'm glad I didn't buy that. Yeah, and, you know, it's great for, um, you know, it's 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 great for, yeah, just kind of dipping in, dipping a toe in and be like, you yeah. know, do I like this? Um, you know, like one of the games that uh, interested me at E3 was Hello Neighbor 2, uh, which is like this procedurally generated game where you're like uh, trying to escape a house essentially from this this guy and like the second game looks really good but i've never given the first game a shot but it's on game pass i'm like maybe i'll just try it you know it's it doesn't yeah. hurt to just hop in or like if i don't like it just hop out yeah which is pretty nice um 
you know, I, one thing I actually just did the other day, and this is through um, the PlayStation Plus collection, uh, finally pl- tried uh, Bloodborne. And oh, dude. I, I tried about uh, maybe about four hours. Just didn't click with me. Oh, man. <laughs> You've never been more wrong about anything uh, in your life. That I think Bloodborne is my Dishonored for you. Oh. It's just one of those, like, yeah, but it's actually uh, good. Yo, this is incredible, all right? <laughs> yeah, but Bloodborne I'll, is just... I'll fight you to the death. <laughs> Blood, Bloodborne, it doesn't even... They're not even in the same, like... Like, you're playing soccer, and I'm over here playing American football. You know? Like, that's the, that, that's the difference we're talking about right now. It's so... Like, Bloodborne's so good. Especially when yeah, you dive just, into, like, um, the weird mythology of it all and, like, the the lore oh it's so excellent so that's that's the part i think is like fascinating you know and i i love like really good world building which is actually a reason why i like uh dishonored it's just like a super cool world that you can kind of explore um i just don't like the combat uh it's one of those things like some people like the, those like dark souls type games like it really clicks with them uh, I, I don't mind a hard game. Like, my f- favorite game I've played this year is definitely Returnal. Like, I love Returnal, and that is a, sure. an incredibly hard game. But the combat's so fluid, so it's just one of those things where it's like you get your butt kicked, but, uh, you know, you, you know how you could do better next time. I It just, the, the combat in um, Bloodborne just didn't click with me. Where Like, you kind of run like there's, like, poop in your pants, and like you're just kind of rolling around. I'd be pooping and, my like... pants if I lived in that world. <laughs> I know, <laughs> the right? It's terrifying. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I will say like w- one of my favorite things is like <laughs> when when you like kill the 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 villagers and uh, they they like fall over and they're just like, Ugh! Uh, oh wait, what do they call you? What do you what do they call you? Uh... Hunter. No, no. When when they're dying, I'm trying to remember what what they say again. Uh, shoot i can't remember but they're just you know, basically they're just like dying and they're just like last breath they're like you bastard <laughs> <laughs> that's why that oh, so uh, great. R- wretched beast that's what they call it they're oh, like, yeah. wretched beast wretched it's beast. like whoa it's <laughs> like, hey <laughs> hey you jerk get, get dead um so yeah you know it, it didn't click with me but um but i'm once again like uh playstation plus collection is incredible you could just hop in if yeah. it's not for you you know it's okay. Move oh, on to dude. God of War. Man, you gotta, you gotta, <laughs> just, just power through, man. Do some grinding, power through. It's so worth it. It's so good because that's the kind of game where it's like you die and you're and you're mad, but you're also like I understand what I did wrong, and you know how to not do it. But when you die, you're just like I'm very frustrated, but I know it's on me. It's not the game. See, that's what everybody tells me, but. When I die in that game, I'm like, "This is the game's fault. That's bad. That's bad game design. See, why uh, do? Why does my character move like this? Poop in his you're butt. Just, you're like, just bad. You just get, you gotta get good. That's the thing. You gotta get good. Returnal is the better Bloodborne. Oh. Anyways, let's uh, let's move on so we can r- r- knock out this show, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but I just wanted to throw that in there. Screw you, Hob. Uh, <laughs> I hate you. I know, I know. You know what else I hate though is the new Nintendo Switch announcement. <laughs> Boom, segue. You Still know. got it, baby. So, um, earlier today, uh, today being Tuesday, the oh, I don't know, sixth, the sixth July sixth. Uh, there was an announcement for the uh, new Nintendo Switch, which, you know, there's been rumors for quite some time that there was going to be a Nintendo Switch Pro. And, you know, I, I'll, I'll say I was one of the ones that believed it. You know, I was like, I, I don't think it's going to be like a huge upgrade, but you know, I, I feel like it's finally time for them to, uh, give us like a 4k, you know, basically like a 4k upscale of their games. And a lot of it's going to be in the dock itself. And nope, we didn't get any of that. We didn't, we didn't get a new, essentially this is just the regular you know nintendo switch but with an oled screen and uh yeah and there's a couple other additions but that's that's the gist of it it's like it's a new it's literally just called the nintendo switch oled model yeah that's it yeah you know it's i it's it kind of feels like they're really die like they're digging into the uh handheld aspect yeah where it's it but even that like because you know unless you're playing a straight up first party nintendo game 
a lot of the games don't necessarily look all that great on the handheld mode. Yeah, so and, and OLED screen's not going to help that, you know. Yeah, so just to kind of paint a picture here, so like I said, you know, kind of the chipset's the same, the processor's the same, all that kind of stuff. So it's still 720p in uh, handheld mode. It's still 1080p in docked mode. Dock is basically the same, except that they added an Ethernet jack, which should have been on, on the first one in the first place. Sham on you, Nintendo! Uh, give us a goddamn Ethernet port. Every time, every console, give us an Ethernet port, you bastards. Yeah. I'm sick of playing choppy, choppy online games and your stupid service. <laughs> I'm so mad at you, Nintendo. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so, um, you know, same, same, uh, you know, Joy Cons and all that. Although there's, uh, there's a model that comes with some, uh, some nice shiny white, uh, Joy Cons, which look pretty nice. Until yeah, the you white dock greasy, and the white like, Joy. Yeah, the the white Joy Cons and white dock look great. I do. I, it's yeah, very but, sleek. Until you, you know, you're, you're done eating your Popeye's chicken, and you get a bunch of like nasty and some hot wings, like, and you got some. Uh, yeah, they, they're suddenly exactly. turning red. Like, like barbecue sauce. <laughs> like, <laughs> got some tangy looking uh, Joy Cons, but but the, but the uh, worst yeah, part so, about that is they didn't even like they didn't change the Joy Cons. Like yeah, they, same Joy-Cons. they're still gonna they're still gonna get drift in like a month when you use them. Which is it's yeah. it's so frustrating. Like, like recently, like last time we were, we checked in, like I was playing Link's Awakening on Switch, and yeah. I I played handheld for like because I was at my computer. And I was like, you know what? I was waiting for something, so I was like, let me just play some Link's Awakening while I wait. And my Joy-Con, which I haven't removed from my Switch in like over a year, has drift somehow. And yeah. that was and I and I sent that Joy-Con into Nintendo for them to fix it. And it was working perfectly fine when I got it back. And now suddenly it's got drift again. And I'm like, I didn't even use it. Like, yeah, it's so it sucks, frustrating. Man. Yeah, my uh, my Switch Lite has drift, so you know it's one of those things I have to send the whole Switch Lite in. Yeah, if, uh, if if there's a problem, and you better hope that it comes back with all your information still on the system <laughs> because it probably won't. Um, I've been really uh, dreading the the idea of maybe sending it in. And that's why I didn't want to get a Switch Lite. That, that's yeah. that's the number one reason. Yeah, so uh, you know, let, let's kind of talk about this this switch for uh, a little bit. I um, yeah, you know, my here, here's my thinking on it. So you know, Nintendo's always done uh, upgrades like this. I, I put upgrades in uh, in quotes here, <laughs> asterisk. So, because yeah, an asterisk and in quotes and you know whatever. <laughs> I <laughs> Any other little, yeah, <laughs> anything else you want to throw in there? But yeah, you know this. It's it's kind of their mo, you know. They they typically, you know, like a, like think about the DS for a moment. You know, there's like the DSi, DS Lite. Sure. You know, uh, they they never really get more powerful with you know their kind of in between systems. At least uh, there's not one that I can think of that they've they've ever been like uh, except for the uh the new 3ds yeah. which had like a, a a slightly more powerful processor but then it you, you got this weird situation where it's like oh a new monster hunter game for the uh for the 3ds like yeah but it's only for the new 3ds yeah <laughs> that's what i was gonna so, say like the, the the 2ds and 3ds they had the new 2ds and new 3ds versions which were slightly more powerful yeah but yeah like other than that yeah, they don't really do the whole, uh, you know, more slightly more powerful console kind of thing. Um, no, I mean, I don't think. Yeah, never. That's never been a thing. I don't think. Yeah, yeah, especially in the olden days. But like, you know, you think about GameCube never happened. You know, Wii never happened. Uh, you know, well, they they had the Wii, Wii U, and then they came out with the Black Wii, and they removed the GameCube ports. <laughs> it was like, yeah. why would you do that? The the red Wii the the like the yeah there was like a red Wii that came out very far you know like literally like six years after that system came out and they took out everything they gutted that thing yeah it's like that was you, like what are you doing yeah that that was like one of those situations where like the Wii woke up in a you know a bathtub full of ice and it's <laughs> yeah. like his kidneys are missing and stuff like they took everything is they took out the uh the internet capabilities they took out the you know the ports like uh, literally every it, port was just gone like, <laughs> like, I, I don't understand the thought process like you just made it worse like what do you 
why? It's because they dropped that baby to like a hundred bucks. You know, that's yeah. really what it was. It was for like kids playing Mario Kart. So yeah. it, like that was like, it literally came with Mario Kart and and like a. I'll say it's it's for thing. like hotel lobbies where it's like you're never yeah. gonna do anything else except have some guests and they like play for like ten minutes. Yeah, so you know it's one of those things like you know people have been kind of talking for a while like. Uh, you know, like Twitter today kind of blew up with like pissed off people. Where it's like, oh, I can't believe it. You know, it's, uh, you know, what what the the new switch is, and it's like, well, they weren't gonna do anything crazy. I never, I never thought like they're, you know, the next switch are basically competing with PS Five and Xbox Series X and whatever. It's, I I figured it was gonna be. Like, uh, like I said, like probably like just a 4K upscale kind of thing, or like not even true 4K, but just like dipping a toe in, sure, you know, 4K. Because you know, when I was thinking, when I was trying to rationalize, like what, what's Nintendo's play here? Because they have, you know, if you want like a handheld machine, Switch Lite is fantastic. I could throw that literally in one of my big pockets, my cargo pants pockets. Sure. And I mean, it's great for travel. Really great for travel. I mean, I. I take that on the plane. I I never take my big switch anywhere because it's it's just slightly too big in my opinion. Um, but the switch light is like pretty perfect for that situation in my in my opinion. It does I'm, have a better grip as well. Yeah, hundred percent. And I even got like a little grip attachment, and it's just like the perfect size for travel. I'm I'm not one of the like the people in the switch commercials where you know you're on the plane and like you ta- you put it in tabletop mode <laughs> the person and there's next like, to you is playing with you yeah exactly uh I, um I've, I've never really you know needed to do anything like that uh so the, the switch light's been perfect and then i just have my big switch here that you know i just leave on the dock and and that's it really i, ju- I just kind of leave it there and anytime i want to play you know switch uh, on my TV, it's just like there, ready to go, um, and and then I just have my little switch light for for you know driving around or, or flights or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I was basically trying to figure out like what 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 do they need? What does the switch need uh, to kind of bring in a new audience or get people excited to maybe buy another switch? Because there's fools like me that'll just buy another switch and. I was like, well, you know, just saying Breath of the Wild in 4K, I, I'm just like, I'm in, I'm in. But, you know, this this new Switch really isn't that. It's just it's just a seven inch OLED, and and everything else is just about the same. And I'm just not excited about that because it's like, I I uh, and I'll, sorry, I'll let you talk in a second, but um, it's just one of those things. Like I, I don't want the seven inch screen when I'm traveling. You know, I, I like the little Switch Lite, so. Having a an OLED screen doesn't tempt me to to buy this, and since there's nothing in docked mode that this thing is doing, I don't know why I would need this. And I'm the kind of per- I'm a sucker. I'm a Nintendo sucker. I will buy every Nintendo thing. This this does not tempt me at all to buy it. So yeah, I think it's it's confusing your customers, right? Because yeah. you have you have an upgrade to a screen, uh, which is only meant for handheld mode. And when it's docked, that OLED screen is nothing. It doesn't factor into anything. Um, so you're also su- selling Switch lights. Yeah. What I don't understand. What you're you're you have two competing things now on the market, which to me doesn't make a lot of sense. It's like, do you want me to have a Switch light for a handheld mode, or do you want me to get this OLED one? Because right now, the Switch light makes more sense to me because it's more compact. It's easier to carry around. Uh, it's meant for on the go. It's 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 a handheld device. That's what it's meant for. This this OLED version is strictly supposed to be a, a better handheld switch. But that's what the switch light is for. It's cheaper and it does the same thing. Uh, I, I just don't get you're just confusing me now. Like what what's the point of this? Because the switch light's right there and it does the same thing. The screen's not as great, yeah, but it's still 720p. It, it's still it's meant for handheld. It's easier to carry around. Um, I won't worry lo- about losing Joy Cons on the go because it's just one solid device. So I just don't. It just doesn't make sense to me. It's it's conflicting yeah. your own market, which I just don't get. Yeah, you know, I would have I would have totally preferred um, a Switch Lite with an OLED screen. Yeah, you know? that makes sense. Like that that would have been like 
I would have been there day one. Yeah, like that, that makes that makes way more sense to me because it's like you know what? Yeah, it's not a Switch Pro, but you know what? The Switch Lite. This is like their handheld system, right? Nintendo's always had their at home system and their handheld system. Now that they have the Switch, it's kind of the same thing. So like, make your you double down your Switch Lite. Like, here's a better screen. Um, you know, it'll be way better on the go. It's like great. Um, that that makes sense, but. To have this, it just doesn't. Again, it's just conflicting and it's confusing. I don't understand which one I'm supposed to have. Yeah, pretty much the only thing I would see this for would be like if you just happen to be in the market for a new Switch, and then it's like, all right, well, do I buy like the three hundred dollars Switch or do I spend a little more money and buy the three fifty Switch? Uh, well, you know, I have an extra fifty bucks, and I do like the option of like taking sure. it with me. So it's like. I would say it's kind of for new people coming in, um, but, you know, it's just, yeah, for the people that I think are typically pretty tempted uh, to buy just new uh, Nintendo products, even if <laughs> their other stuff is just fine, yeah. um, I just, I, you know, I, I'm not aching to go out and get it. And the other, the other thing, um, uh, and this kind of brings me back to my little Xbox One Series S, uh, I mean, man... The Series S is a freaking rad system for three hundred bucks. You get a lot of system for three hundred bucks. Oh, yeah. You know, you get a ten eighty p like powerhouse. You know, you can get games at like, uh, you know, sixty frames. Uh, some of those games run at one hundred and twenty hertz. Like, I mean, uh, plus obviously everything that kind of comes with the series S like game pass and all that stuff. I mean, it's just, it's a really good deal. I, and obviously the, this series S is brand new. I, I got that and a second controller for like 330 bucks, uh, bad. As, as like a bundle. Yeah. It's like, so I have two controllers plus like a, like a, you know, a, a rad 1080p powerhouse system, uh, where like er- everything's like upscaled to just look, nice and sharp uh and you know it's just it's pretty dang beefy for that 300 uh 300 dollar price point and like the 350 price point on the switch it would have made sense if it was like a switch pro kind of thing with like sure. a more powerful dock you know uh but yeah it just it just feels like a weird price point when you can get for 300 bucks you can get a Series S for four hundred bucks, you can get a PlayStation di- Five Digital Edition, which is awesome. Like, so you got this like switch in the middle. Granted, like the S and the PlayStation Five, you can't take on the go. Yeah. So you know this is like a. Uh, but again, that's what your Switch Lite's for. Yeah. That's why so you're selling just, a Switch Lite. Yeah. So it just it just doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's a very specific market. It's got to be for people that like don't have a switch already. I it's, but I swear they're living by their advertisements. Like, or do you want to have a rooftop party and just play Mario Kart on your roof with your buddies? Well, here's a nicer <laughs> screen. It's like, no, I don't do that. Nobody does that. Like, I'm not gonna take it outside and play it on the go, like at a park or on a rooftop or yeah. wherever these people are in your commercials. Like that, I'm not doing that. Yeah, hundred percent. So yeah, it's just um. Yeah, I don't know. I I don't know who it's for. Um, yeah, for the for the people out there that are excited, great. You know, uh, good luck, Godspeed. Um, I I think I'll just be sitting this one out. If for some reason my Switch dies, yeah, maybe I'll uh, I'll I'll get it, but it probably won't because Nintendo makes some, you know, fine pieces of equipment. I do. The Joy-Con. Except the and, and again, even that would have been a nice selling point where if they would have said like new Joy-Con technology. It's like, <laughs> "Oh, nice. They they can't say no drift, but they can at least say, "Hey, this one is going to last longer than 2 months." I yeah. promise. Yeah, Joy-Con but, Plus. Or yeah. Whatever, you know. It's... But it's just a shame. It's just I don't like again, I I saw it and I was like, "I don't understand who this is for. I don't get it." Yeah. So, I don't know. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll see what happens. I'm I'm interested to to check out the the sales figures once this comes out. You know, obviously the Switch has been like I mean, it's still selling sold. well. Yeah, I mean it's selling really well. So like really, they don't need a new system out there. Um, you know, they're doing just fine. They they've been like outselling uh the other consoles like three to one for the last like two years. Yep. So you know, it's it's one of those things like they don't they don't really need a new console, but um yeah yeah we'll see we'll see what happens um so let's let's go ahead and move on to something 
uh, that people are also a little mad about. But, <laughs> but you know, that's the internet for you. You know, pe- can't please everybody. First world problems. Uh, that's what this show's about. So, um, yeah, Ghost of Tsushima director's cut is uh, it's coming. And it's coming quick. Uh, it's uh, August, I think. Uh, ooh, the date's around here somewhere. Where did I put that date? No one knows. It's August something. It, yeah, I'm pretty I, sure. I forget the exact date as well. <laughs> I have this article in front of me, but August 20th. Uh, aug- yeah, August 20th. Uh, so, yeah, man. Um, so th- this is basically what I've been waiting for. I haven't played Ghost of Tsushima yet. And it's because I got the PS5 and I was like, you know, I bet... There's going to be an enhanced edition like six months after that game's out. And here it is. You know, I'd say it's, I don't know. Has it been a year since that game's been out? I guess. Maybe. Possibly. I uh, think so. God, it's hard to think about time after this past I know, right? year. Uh, I think so. I, I don't remember the exact date it came out. Let's yeah. See. No one knows. There's no way to know. <laughs> no, so, it's, it's impossible. Um, <laughs> yeah. So. You know, uh, the director's cut is coming out. This oh is God. for it's been PS4. One year. Came out July seventeenth. Oh, nice. Well, there you go. So yeah, uh, so yeah, basically this was announced. This is for PS4 and PS5, and there's basically a bunch of new goodies. You know, this new uh, armor, uh, new mini games, fighting techniques, enemies, environments, new island. Uh, yeah, new new island, new controller mapping options. One of my favorite Ooh. things is very tiny, but there's going to be like a lock-on mode when you fight combat. Because that's oh. the one thing I didn't like about the combat is like you can't lock on to targets in that game. Oh, yeah, I think, you know, when we originally talked about the game, I think that was one of your, uh, yeah. you know, the things it's that... Very you. annoying. It's very frustrating because like, I'm like, oh, I just want to just lock on to a person. They're like, all right. Here, you can lock on to somebody. Now. I'm like, yay, I, I'll, I feel much better fighting people now. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so that's basically, yeah, it, you know, it's coming out August 20th. It's got a bunch of uh, new, you know, just, uh, it's like some extra coats of paint and some uh, some tweaks. And, you know, I'm, I'm excited because I've, I've yet to play it. There are people that are mad about the price point. Um, you know, you had, basically, if you bought the game, uh on ps4 you can basically get this for 10 bucks on ps4 uh but if you oh hang on no that is incorrect so here it is so you can upgrade directly from the original ghost of tsushima ps4 to director's cut on ps5 for 30 dollars uh and if you get this for PS4. See, this is where it gets confusing. I hate this. <laughs> it's tough you can dealing also, with two consoles. Like, yeah, yeah. So if you if you get if you have it for PS4 and you buy the director's cut for PS4, it's twenty dollars. But then if you want the PS5 enhancements, it's an extra ten dollars. So basically, it's like if you want this for PS5, it's gonna be thirty bucks. Right. Uh, unless you haven't bought it like me, and then it's seventy bucks. So I guess I'll be paying seventy dollars. <laughs> I'll pay. I'll pay thirty um, bucks. I mean, that's that's. I mean, it's just you're paying like extra DLC and also just quality of life improvements. Oh yeah, which is uh, I don't think it's that bad. So do you kind of feel the same way as God of War, where like you're excited to kind of jump back into this? Yes. You know, is this like a? Do you feel like this is like a pretty replayable game? Uh yeah, I think so. Um, mainly because. I think the combat is pretty satisfying, especially when you're good at it. When you get really good at the combat, you can just like flow just and go untouched, which is very satisfying. And um, using like the uh, once you get all like all the all the samurai stances that you get, um, like switching between them and like again, it just feels really nice flowing through combat because it's like once you recognize like certain enemies are weak against certain stances and then some are more, you know, it's the rock, paper, scissors thing. Yeah. yeah. And then you're constantly switching and like dealing with multiple enemies. It, it becomes a lot of fun. Plus the story is it's a good story. Like it's a, it's a good ending too. Like ending is kind of just, it's a little heartbreaking. I don't want to give you too many spoilers, but like it really tugs at the heart. And um, right. yeah, I, I, I absolutely love it. And, and one thing I think they also said is that they're going to do, um, 
they're going to do lip sync with the Japanese uh, voiceover work. Yeah, which, which is I think great. is really cool. That's that's so rad. I, I and that's not easy. Like going no. back through and and doing that. So you know. Props to Suck Punch for for you know that, kind of going the extra mile yeah. there. That's for, why I don't mind fans. the the price point. Like I, I like when you think about the work that has to go into that that what they're doing. Like there's a lot. Like it's yeah. it's. I mean it's already a lot to do anything in a video game. To like throw a rock is just takes forever to program and stuff. But like when you have to go through the entire thing, all the dialogue and like facial expressions and all that stuff and change all that. Like that's a that's pretty amazing. And like I already liked like playing it in with the Japanese voiceover, but it was, it was always kind of weird because it didn't match. Yeah. It was like a weird dub movie. But like now that they're syncing it, I can't wait to do that. Cause I think it's like, I think it's even better playing it uh, with Japanese VO. Yeah. And, and that's actually the way I want to play. So this really excites me. I'm, I'm honestly, I'm really glad I, I waited for, for some of this stuff. And you know, a lot of times after about a year, you know, a game is in like such a better state anyway. So it's like, you know, if you're not like, in a major rush to play a game it's like waiting a year is yeah so much better it, it would be like you know uh for like christmas if there's like a present under, under the tree that like you know what it is <laughs> but it's like man i really want that bike but if i wait till next christmas to open it it'll be a like better a, bike a, yeah it's like it's <laughs> now it's now it's a moped you know it's like <laughs> you know it's uh because that's how Christmas works. <laughs> I just imagine under the tree you're looking at it's just a bike with like a bow on it, and you're just like, it'll be better though. Yeah, it's like ne- next year it's gonna have some tassels on it. It's gonna like picnic basket. Yeah, it's gonna have like some some much better uh, tires. It's gonna have those pegs, you know. The yeah, pegs. it's gonna have a card yeah. in the spokes. Oh yeah. <laughs> You know, it's gonna have it all next year, but I have to wait. I can't. I can't mess with that, it. That's so honestly just... how I feel about Returnal. I think Returnal, they're going to do more to it. And I've actually, that's what I'm waiting for. Because I thought about it, and I'm like, you know what? I have a really strong feeling that, because, especially because of how well-received it was, that they're going to do something even more for this game in like a year's time. Yeah, dude, I, I hope so. Because I literally can't stop thinking about that game. I really want to play through it again. Uh, but I'm like, I'm trying to hold back because I've basically done everything. Right. Um, so except like get a platinum in that game which i think would probably be hard i think you have to do a bunch of stuff with like every single weapon but like you you could go through an entire playthrough of that game and not buy one of the weapons because it's all oh yeah random it's all random so it's just like you, you don't you don't know but man i would love to play through returnal again um also it's not on my list but uh man housemark is uh is now a playstation um yeah uh you know first party which congrats that? to house mark like those guys have been crushing it for years with games like dead nation and rezo gun and you know super stardust and like all these like rad games and you know they've put in the work they've struggled for years to like make any money because a lot of people don't buy arcade shooters and you know house mark's been pretty open about it where it's like look we can't make games like this anymore because people don't buy them. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's like, you know, it's it's one of those things. It's just like, uh, yeah, it just, uh, that's tough. That's that's a tough position to be in. Like, if you love making arcade shooters, like bullet hell type arcade shooters, but nobody buys them, it's like, well, I mean, what, what do you do? It's uh, You get bought by and, Sony. Yeah. That's the answer is you make a triple A bullet hell game and i'm so glad they made that because that game is freaking rad (laughs) it's like uh oh i love that game but um so yeah so that's that um so let's let's move on um uh now i'm just thinking about return (laughs) (laughs) i love that game um so i i read an interesting article today and I wanted to kind of bring it up. Uh, I thought this is so interesting. Obviously, on this show, you know, we love to talk about uh, about history, you know, video game history. And, and you know, one, one thing with, like, Nintendo's history uh, that is, you know, kind of like a... I don't want to say a well-kept secret, secret but they definitely don't really talk about it very much, is um, the types of video games they like. Or, that you know, just, like, games specifically that they like. Um, I think Miyamoto's Nintendo... been open about that before, though. Yeah, he's always yeah, said he... like, "I don't play other games." 
<laughs> yeah, like, he, he, yeah, he plays his own games. Yeah, he's like, I play my games. <laughs> yeah, which is like an interesting take as an artist where... Yeah, it's a weird flex. Yeah, well, you know, it's... I'd say it's less of a flex and it's just more... And, and he kind of... He, he mentions it, it in this article where he's like, I don't want other uh, games to um, influence me on my game design. That's why I'm which saying is... it's like a, it's a little bit of a flex. It's like I don't <laughs> want anyone else's influence on me. I don't want to experience what other people have to offer. Yeah, it's just like, and you know, I think it's just part of like what makes Nintendo games so different than everything else that's out there. You know, it's like you look at stuff like Ubisoft games. It's like you could tell an Ubisoft game from a mile away because it's like, yeah, you know, they kind of. Uh, they kind of all do the same thing, but it's also like you could tell what games are influenced by Ubisoft games. You know, it's it's one of those things like all, there's so many games that are influenced by each other, uh, and you know they take a lot of the same like button mapping and oh, yeah. like every play, like every first person shooter has the same button mapping now. You know, it's it's just one of those things, and and yeah, a lot of games are very similar to one another nowadays. Um, but you know. Games like Breath of the Wild, uh, you know, Mario Odyssey, they, they, they're just kind of doing their own thing, you know? And it's because, yeah, Miyamoto don't care what I'm still, anybody else is making. <laughs> I'm still waiting for someone to copy Breath of the Wild. I, like, I feel like nobody's, in terms of, like, the exploration and, like, yeah. how you can move anywhere you want, I don't think anybody else has really done that, where it's like, man, there, climb that mountain. Uh, there's that, uh... Uh, what's that game called? Uh, Phoenix Rising. Well, is that what it's called? I Fe- don't... Fe- Phoenix Rising. It's that Ubisoft game. I don't know. Phoenix Rising that does not sound familiar. Yeah, Phoenix Rising. Uh, uh, Immortals. Phoenix Rising. Oh, I've heard of that. Yeah. So that's if if you look at that game, like that is Ubisoft trying to make Breath of the Wild. Yeah, but then it's like you see how I've never I, it's not really that familiar in my head. <laughs> so I'm just like it's clearly not as good. Yeah. No, nah, I mean it's it's an Ubisoft game. <laughs> yeah. No offense. You did great yeah. with Mario Rabbids. Oh yeah. That was good. Yeah, but you know, that that kind of breaks the mold for an Ubisoft game, yeah. which is why it's great. Yeah, it's, it's it's awesome. I love that game. Uh but anyway, so uh yeah, d- let me read a little bit from this Kotaku uh article i i thought it was just like pretty interesting um so at nintendo's 81st annual general meeting of shareholders a q a section allowed those uh present to ask all kinds of business related questions uh and obviously like you know for people that don't know, know much like shareholder meetings it's basically like the big shareholders of nintendo they're like will basically ask questions like Yo, uh, when is Breath of the Wild two coming out? Uh, that's important to me because I know that's gonna like make the stock go up. You know, yep. it's like so. You know, you get a lot of interesting um, information uh, kind of that, that comes out through these like shareholder meetings because um, if a shareholder asks a question, it's, it's typically you as the company. Uh, that has shareholders like, well, I need to answer this question. <laughs> so you get some kind of interesting stuff that comes out of here. But uh, but anyway, so, quote, uh, uh, what, however, was so obvious I cannot believe it hasn't been asked before. Someone simply wanted to know what everyone's favorite video games were. Uh, those asked included President uh, Shun- uh, Shuntaro uh, Furukawa, sorry, I'm not a Japanese speaker, so I'm just butchering all this stuff today. So my apologies for everyone out there, but uh, Senior Executive Officer Ko Shioto, uh, Shiota, uh, Senior Managing Executive Officer Shinya Takahashi, and uh, Senior Executive Officer Satora Shibata, and Legendary Designer Shigeru Miyamoto. Uh, so, yeah, I just wanted to kind of run through some of these. I, I thought it was pretty fun. So, for uh, Fu- uh, Furukawa, uh, who's the president, uh, he just simply says, uh, Super Mario Brothers was released when I was in junior <laughs> high school. So I was right in the middle of the Famicom generation. Uh, even today in my private time, I play various games, both from Nintendo and from other companies. I play most of our own first party titles, but recently I've been playing a lot of the Hanafuda card game and Clubhouse Games 51 
worldwide classic. So uh, I thought this was like a pretty interesting quote. Obviously, um, you know, Super Mario Brothers, you know, that's a, that's a pretty easy like go to for somebody. Um, but I think that makes sense for, you know, uh, you know, uh, for Fubukawa because, you know, if he's a junior in high school when Super Mario Brothers comes out, that's oh, yeah. like that's got to be mind blowing. Yeah. What a time oh, to yeah. be like, yo, where's this game been my whole life? Yeah. Um, that's laying the groundwork for like what he's going to be doing. Yeah. Hundred percent. So you know, I thought that was like that, that's definitely pretty interesting. Um, the other kind of piece of information that you sort of extract from this quote is that you know he says I play various games both from Nintendo and other companies, which like like I said, Nintendo hardly ever talks about playing other companies like video games and consoles and stuff. So it's it's. It's nice to hear it, the president of Nintendo say, like, yeah, I play, like, third-party games. Um, even just that little bit, it's like, that's good to know because yeah. you, you got to see what the competition's doing, you know? At least somebody needs to be. <laughs> third-party um, games are, like, mobile games that he's playing. I mean, mobile games are huge in Japan, so that, I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah, you know? that's why I'm thinking it is. Yeah, so... Yeah, you know, at the very least, like I'll I'll take that little nugget. You know, it's it's good to hear that. Um, so, uh, Shiota, uh, he says I was part of the Famicom generation and grew up with the NES and SNES. I'm in charge of hardware now, but I've uh, tinkered with hardware and been interested in how things work ever since. That probably explains why I gravitate to games like our recent product, Mario Kart Live Home Circuit, which I play with my kids. Um, so. Yeah, I, I thought that one was like pretty cool. Obviously, you know that the man, yeah, he's he's working with like hardware design and stuff, you know. So, um, you know, the fact that he he loves that game, plays with the kids and stuff, like, just shows you like, you know, if he's running hardware, we're probably just gonna keep getting like crazy kooky stuff from Nintendo, like that, which is like. He's, you know, they're toy makers. He, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. He's the spirit of their original, their toy company. He's making yeah, cool toys. So- yeah, so you know who knows? Like we might get another like AR type uh, machine, kind of like um, that Mario Kart Live Circuit. You know, it, it would be cool to see what else they can do with that technology. You know, they mm-hmm. I think they did a pretty great job with that. Um, so it'd be interested to see what else they could do um, in a world kind of like that, where you can sort of build your own track or or you know whatever, like a. Uh, and yeah, you know, I kind of think about like, like the Mario Lego set. But uh, imagine like you could build your own like Mario level and experience that through AR somehow. It's like something like that could be yeah pretty cool. So I, I just thought that was like a pretty interesting one. Um, we're running low on time, so I'm gonna skip through a few of these. But you know, we're basically uh you know some of these guys are saying like famicom detective club which seems pretty cool um uh that's definitely a series i i want to uh play through um and then some like kind of japanese very japanese like specific games um and uh i want to get to miyamoto uh while we still have a little bit of time because this this is a, a pretty good one so quote i basically tend to play the games i created myself so i haven't been influenced much by the games of other companies that said the first game that influenced me when i started the job of game development was pac-man and from a design perspective i think tetris is wonderful i'm currently hooked on pokemon go this game, which I'm playing with my wife, is a dream come true of playing a game with my whole family. I've been enjoying Pokemon Go with my wife and neighborhood friends for some two years now. The average person playing Pokemon Go in Japan is probably around 60 years old. He laughs. Mobile um, gaming. Mobile gaming. So, uh, yeah, so obviously it's like you know, the man appreciates good game design. So it's one of those things where it's like Pac-Man and um uh tetris Tetris, obviously it's like yeah i mean those games are incredible they hold up today you know yeah um and they're so good uh 
So it's just kind of interesting to see like where his mind is at. Um, the fact he's been playing like Pokemon Go so much is like pretty interesting too. Uh, once again, AR. Like I, I'm curious if he'll try and do anything with that type of uh, technology. You know, I've heard people sort of mention um, like a like a Pikmin AR game. Um, yeah, as, as, you know, kind of float an idea like that around, which you know, depending on what it is, like. I, I could get into something like that if it's I would want like a more of like a um not not like a kind of a shared world Pokemon Go kind of thing where you're like running around, you know, town trying to like find Pokemon or like Pikmin in this matter. Be like more like if I could play a do a story, through like do a game within my own house, like finding Pikmin like behind my couch and then like fighting <laughs> you know, fighting things like that, you know, that would be kind of cool. Or like, you're like walking and then you turn your camera and you just see like, you're like, you know, 80 Pikmin just like following behind you. <laughs> yeah. That would, be, that would be pretty fun. You take a little selfie and they're all behind you. Yeah. I mean, it makes so, sense that he um, would be playing Pokemon Go a lot. Cause he's probably just, you know, the man works nonstop. So he's just, you know, whenever he's on the go with his family or something, that's when he'll yeah. pull out his phone and play Pokemon. He also, that man loves nature. Like he gardens a lot. He takes a lot of walks. He, he, likes to ride his bike so it's it's one of those things where um it's i yeah i i bet him and his wife just do a lot of like walking around the neighborhood mm-hmm. and catching pokemon and stuff seems like you know something miyamoto would be totally yeah. into so um yeah just uh you know that was like an inch some uh interesting insights into like the minds of like some of the heads of nintendo and, like where their heads are at um Cool, man. Uh, we're coming up towards the end of the show. What? All right, so... <laughs> oh, God, I dropped my cards. Hang on. So, <clears throat> I figured, since it's been a while, why don't we do a little round of You Nintendo Don't Know Jack to see if you do or do not know things. Yeah. <laughs> For the people out there that, uh, you know, maybe haven't uh, been around with, uh, with uh, one of these uh, silly... <laughs> this the silly game. So essentially, I have a uh, these flashcards from 1995, the Mario quiz cards, and uh, they're pretty wacky. None of them make sense. They're uh, <laughs> really they're, weird. Uh, you know, it's a weird collaboration. Weird. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the, and they span all sorts of genre. These uh, these quiz card qu- questions. Um, today, our genres we're going to be talking about are geography, beliefs and legends, and art, sports, and leisure. So that's going to be the genre. So, right. Hav, I'm going to ask you these questions, and we're going to see if you, Nintendo, don't know Jack. All right. You ready for this? Let's go. All right. So, Hav, when is a volcano extinct? When is a volcano extinct? So here are uh, your multiple choice answers. So, number one, when the crater is filled by solidified lava... Number two, when the crater explodes. Or number three, when the lava doesn't overflow. I didn't even know that was a thing, that volcanoes go extinct. Um, oh, yeah, just uh, just they went the way of the dinosaurs. <laughs> I guess the first one? So when the crater is filled by solidified lava. Yeah. That's what I, you're going that with? That makes sense. It's solid. Okay, let's take a look. And you are correct. Ding, yeah. ding, ding, ding. Knew it. Easy. So extinct volcano. Scientists say a volcano is extinct or dormant when the vents in its crater are blocked by solidified lava. But unlike extinct dinosaurs that are gone forever, an extinct volcano can awaken with a bang, which doesn't sound very extinct So it's extinct not extinct. To me. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't make any sense. doesn't sound very extinct to me. But I like this little uh, this picture on the front. It's like a like a sleeping volcano. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> like Mario and Luigi are looking in. I like that. That's pretty good. Yeah, and the the little flying birds. I uh, I don't remember the name of those guys from Mario Two, but he's up yeah, there too, he's on the out. magic carpet. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, which by the way, I like those little. I, I like j- hopping on those little uh, carpets uh, and just taking those birds and throwing them like, get off my plane. <laughs> 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 All right. Here's your second question. Hav, which Greek god rode on a chariot of fire? 
Was it Hades? Yes, that's Helios. Helios? Let me get through the damn question. <laughs> oh, come on, man. History. <laughs> or Hermes. <laughs> Who's Helios? Let's see if he's right. I'm pretty sure he is. And it's Helios. Ooh. I've been playing ding, God ding, of War. Ding, ding. I know, right? <laughs> it's a uh, perfect timing. So the Greek god of the sun, Helios, was so radiant and bright that only other gods could look at him. Mere mortals could not. <laughs> Uh yeah, and I like this little. There's a picture of Mario as a firefighter just putting out the fire on the back <laughs> of, of chariot. Helios's That's chariot. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was pretty great. Why not put him on the chariot? There's also this uh this weird picture on the back if you can see this of like a kid like waking up with like yeah Helios above with Helios it's, above him. It's very weird. It's a very weird picture. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, there. I don't understand why that's that. <laughs> All right, let's uh let's go on to the last one. Let's see if uh you can go three for three. This is from uh Art Sports and Leisure. Uh Hav, who invented cubism? France. It's always it, France. It is Fra- so was it Pablo Picasso, Sylvester Stallone, <laughs> <laughs> or Eli Whitney? Rocky himself. <laughs> Rocky himself. Just putting Punching <laughs> pictures into <laughs> creation. Uh, <laughs> hey, yo, yo, Adrian, I'm making cubism over here. <laughs> um, what was the first one, Picasso? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to say Picasso. <laughs> and here it is. Ding, ding, ding. It's Pablo Picasso. Damn. Cubism is a form of abstract painting and sculpting developed by Pablo Picasso. <laughs> And why so Stallone? I don't. It's, these <laughs> questions are so random. It's like, what? Why? Who put? Who? Why would anybody think it's Sylvester Stallone? Like, I understand this is for kids, and they probably don't know who Sylvester Stallone is. But at the same time, it's like, why would you do that? <laughs> yeah, it's just a weird choice. Put put three artists on there. Like, damn. <laughs> He's an artist, technically. I mean, not this kind of artist. <laughs> But I do like this uh this silly like cubism picture of Mario on the front here. Oh, that's interesting. A, yeah. That's pretty cool. I thought, yeah, I thought that one was pretty nice. <laughs> but Sylvester Stallone, you know, the the man behind cubism. <laughs> that's such a weird <laughs> weird answer. Yeah, so all right. 3 for 3. Good job, dude. Thanks, man. All right. So that is our show everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this week. Uh I uh man, I miss this show. So, um I hope, and you know, I'm, I'm kind of planning things on the fly here. You know, I, I'm going to be out of town for the next couple of weeks, so hopefully, uh, I, I might be able to like squeeze in an episode. I uh, at like a hotel or something, uh, for like an hour. We'll see. I'll, I'll touch base with you, Hob. Sure. Well, uh, but you know, at the very least, you know, Hob, I, I hope you're able to, um, you know, keep the fans happy. You know, uh, and bring some guests on or something. But I'll, I'll try and be here if. Uh, uh, but you know, I, I know your work schedule is still crazy too. So, you know, uh, we'll keep in touch everybody. Hopefully we can, uh, we can get it all worked out as far as, um, episodes, uh, for the next couple of weeks while I'm out of town. But, uh, remember, uh, you know, you can find us over at, uh, at go multiplayer on Instagram. I'm at Zach Matt Scandis. That's the A-C-K-M-A-T-Z-G-A-N-I-S. Hav, he's over at, uh, at loverboy Lover underscore Lover- Hav. Loverboy underscore Hive. And, of course, you can find us over at Patreon at patreon.com slash multiplayer where you can throw some buck or two a month and, and kind of help support the show. So Av can quit his uh, his, uh, his my evening. My night job yeah. of sling, hooking and slinging. <laughs> his... <laughs> Ridiculous. But thank you so much for joining us, everybody. We're glad to be back. Hopefully we'll be back again <laughs> over the next couple weeks. And of course, uh, re- remember that you know the, these shows are on Wednesdays when, when they release. I always forget to say it at the at the top of the show, but Wednesdays, every Wednesday, when we're here. But thank you so much. Uh, we will see you next week, hopefully. And of course, remember, we love you, and you we love you love so you much. Too. We love you, baby. Peace. We here at Multiplayer would like to give a huge special thank you to Kevin Hopkins, William Euchre, 
and the rest of our amazing Patreon community. If you'd like to support our podcast and get a shout out at the end of each show, be sure to check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash multiplayer. See you next time, players. We love you.